thee dominion, glory, and power is thine forever and evermore, O oh God. Yes, Lord. God, you are the source of our life, and we depend on you for everything, Lord. It is through your will, God, that yes, we are alive today, yes. that we are moving, and that we are in our right mind, and we thank you for that, Lord God. Oh, your Jesus. grace has allowed us, Father God, to come together and worship you and praise you this morning. And Father God, you have promised us that whatsoever we ask in your name, that you will hear and answer us. God, we ask that you come into our midst this morning, that you be with us, Lord God, that your Shekinah glory just be among us this morning. In the name of Jesus, God, come and have fellowship with us in this service this morning. Make your blessings abundant yes. and your grace and your presence be with us this morning. From the beginning of this service, O oh God, until the end, glorify yourself, oh, Lord God. God. Lord glorify Jesus. yourself in all Amen. that is said and done this oh. morning. We thank you for your yes, blessed Lord word, Jesus. God, that will go forth this thank morning. And God, we ask that uh, uh, that you will be oh, with your Jesus. man of God. Anoint your man of God, uh, oh, servant, Jesus. Father, and he Lord. as he go forth, Lord God, Amen. to speak Lord, your Jesus. word. For this people, for oh, this time, Lord yes, God, Lord. Yes, and Lord. this message. And, and God, we Jesus. just thank you for all your blessings. We oh, thank you for Jesus. Jesus Christ who died on the cross. Yes, God. And through his blood, oh, God, we Jesus. are saved. We thank you and yes, we Lord. bless you, Lord, bless this you, morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We just Amen. praise God. We praise thank you for your glory, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 honor and glory for his goodness and for his mercy. We thank God today for life, for health, and for strength, and to be able to come back again into the house of God, and to give him thanks, and to give him praise, and to give him glory. Amen. 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 I thank God on this morning for Evangelist First Lady Harden, who gave us that wonderful uh, invocational prayer on this morning. I thank God for her. I thank God for each and every one of you that's on the prayer line that's joining us in our services on this morning. We just thank God. We praise God and we honor Him, we worship Him, and we magnify Amen. God. Amen. For he is the author and finisher of our faith. Remember these words taken from the book of Acts, chapter 19 and verse 20. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. We are the Prevailing Word of God Community Church, and we thank God that you have decided to uh, be a part of our service on today, either by uh, via um, uh, social media or on our prayer line. We just thank God for each and every one of you. Truly, there are so many other places that you can be right now, but we thank God that you are here with Amen. us. Praise the name of the Lord. And here at this church, we believe in honoring God. We believe in praising God and worshiping Him and to give Him the praise, honor, and glory that is due Him. Amen. The Lord has kept us from sickness Amen. and disease. He's kept us from the plagues and the pestilence that's, growing, that's uh, ravishing our land and the world right now. And so God, once again, has proven His faithfulness. The Bible declares that God is a faithful God. He's faithful in mercy. He's faithful in His grace. And he is especially faithful to the people of God, Amen. to the household of faith, those that are in Christ, those
those who are a part of the divine nature and who are uh, have been translated from the kingdom of darkness and placed into the kingdom of his dear son. We thank God Amen. on today for a relationship. Don't you thank God that you're in Christ on this morning? Amen. Don't you thank God? Oh, praise the name of the Lord that your, that your name is written down in the book of the Lamb. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to have a message for you on today. We pray uh, that God would just continue to uh, continue to bless his word. It's the word of God. It's the word of God. It's not me. It's not Evangelist Harden. It's not us. It's the word of God. And we want to be found doing the will of God that's found in the word of Amen. God. Amen. Amen. So on this Sunday morning, October 25th, we come uh, with a message on today. We pray uh, that you would be, we pray that you're praying for us and praying for our, our, uh, uh, our obedience to the Word of God. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want to direct your attention uh, to, uh, to uh, Ephesians, the second chapter, the second uh, chapter of the epistle to the church at Ephesus. That's Ephesians, the second chapter. And then we're also going to visit some more passages uh, in 1 Peter. You can write this down. I'll repeat them later, but uh, in 1 Peter, the third chapter, uh, verses 18 through 22, we're going to take a look at that because we have uh, a message for you uh, uh, that's, a, that's a continuation of uh, some uh, additional uh, earlier messages that we have preached uh, uh, over the last several weeks. So in the, in the book of Ephesians, the second chapter, I'm reading from the New King James Version, it reads, As for you who were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in the children of disobedience. Verse 3, all of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of the flesh and following its desires and thoughts. And like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. Verse 4, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions. Mm -hmm. It is by grace that we have been saved. Mm -hmm. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse, seven, verse 6, and God raised us up with Christ and has seated us with him in the heavenly realm mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus. Amen. In order that he that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. Amen. Verse 8 For it's by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not of yourselves it is the gift of God. Verse 9, not of works, mm -hmm. so that no man can boast. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus, to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now skip over to 1 Peter, the third chapter, and run your fingers down to verse 18. It reads, for Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, mm -hmm. that he might bring us to God, underline bring us to God, mm -hmm. that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Praise Amen. the name of the Lord. Amen. By whom also we have, he went and he preached to the spirits in prison, who formerly were disobedient when once, when once the divine long-suffering waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight souls were saved through water. Verse 21, there is also an antitype mm -hmm. symbolism, a symbol, which, is not, which now saves us, baptism. Not the removal, watch this, not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of good conscience toward God 
through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into the heavens mm -hmm. and is at the right hand Amen. of God. Amen. Angels and authorities and powers have been made subject to him. Amen. The God. operative phrase in that, ver in that verse in, in verse 18 and first of uh, 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 First Peter 3 and 18, it reads, For Christ also, if I had a golden text, I would say, For Christ has also suffered once for sin, the just for the unjust, mm -hmm. that he might bring us to God. Amen. It's Christ suffering for sin that has brought us to God. It is Christ suffering and paying our sin debt Amen. that has brought us into the presence of God. Amen. I can't overemphasize that enough. And in, in this message that I have for you, uh, we will be emphasizing this quite often. I've taken for a thought for the, uh, from these passages, you must be identified with Christ Amen. through baptism. You must be identified with Christ through baptism. Now, this is the fourth sermon in our salvation series. We've been teaching a salvation series over the last several weeks on the subject of ye must be born again. Mm -hmm. We want to appeal in this church the message of salvation, the message of deliverance, the message of subterion, that God, that, that the hand of God is open to save sinners. Yeah. Jesus said, I came to seek and to save those that were lost. He's given us the great commission. Amen. Go ye therefore out into all the world and do what? Preach the gospel. Amen. And so there is a mission. There is a uh, an objective to uh, what we have been preaching and teaching over these last several uh, weeks. And we want to be at the prevailing Word of God Community Church. We want to be found faithful to the message that God has given Amen. us. Preach you that. must be born again was our first message. We found that uh, we came from uh, St. John, the third chapter. We uh, uh, read and understood the, the, uh, the narrative from the text of the conversation that Jesus had with Nicodemus. And from the text, we determined that no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. You can't see it. And then Jesus said, you can't enter Amen. the kingdom of God Amen. unless you are born yes. again. We understood this word is used in com is, is interchangeably with regeneration. You must be born again. You must be regenerated. To be born again, we just understand that it's a spiritual rebirth brought about by the Spirit of God. The Holy Ghost is the agent whereby we become regenerated or born again. Mm, it's not something, it's not a change of mind. It's not joining a church or a social right. club. Or just saying a few words. It's an act of the Holy Ghost. Amen. He's the agent whereby we are born again, or we are we are regenerated because of the by the power Amen. of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. We use that interchangeably. A Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. You say it is this His name, and we and that's how we use it in this church. We're talking about the third person of the Godhead, Amen. the Triune God. Jesus contrasted earthly birth. To heavenly rebirth. He said you have to be born of the water and of the mm -hmm. spirit of the Holy Ghost. There's natural birth and then there is mm -hmm. spiritual birth. Amen. Jesus taught that God's love was demonstrated by God the Father by giving his only begotten son. Hereby we know that God loves us because he's put it on display. This thing, as it says in the book of Jeremiah, wasn't done in the corner. It was it was laid out publicly. God, Jesus hung on a cross publicly Amen. on high upon a mountain Amen. on an old rugged cross on Mount yes. Calvary, Golgotha. And that was God putting Amen. his love for us Amen. on display. The Bible says that God Amen. demonstrated his love yes. for us yes. and that Amen. while we were yet yes. sinners, Christ died Amen. for us. We also understand that, that, that if we believe and receive Amen. the Son, if we believe on the Son and His finished work mm. and His death, His burial, His resurrection, yes. the Bible says we shall have it, it, everlasting Amen. life, eternal life, and we will not mm. perish. Mm. Praise God. Praise he God. taught that, the, that He is the light, and that light has come into the world. Yes. Praise Jesus went on also to say that I'm going away. 
while I'm here, I'm the light of the world. But when I go away, ye are the lights mm -hmm. of the world. And I, I'm, I'm praying that God will have caused oh that the, 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 the church of God, the church, the prevailing word of God community church will be one of those lights that he had Amen. in mind. We preached the second sermon that the new birth, not only that you can be born again, but, but why you should be born again. Mm -hmm. That you should be born again. You must be born again. Number two, that you can be born again. We understood the difference between spiritual birth and spiritual, uh, uh, natural birth and spiritual rebirth. The Bible says it causes us to have life, Amen. new life in him. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, uh, brother, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Amen. One that's never that's existed before, but a new creation, Amen. a new creature, a new creation in Christ. This was also referred to, as we pointed out, born again and in the regeneration. On last week, we took it a little step further. We took, we took our message was, was, was on, we are who we are, who we are in Christ. You must be born again. You, you can be born again, and who we are in Christ. Yes. We understand that we are somebody yes. in Christ. Yes. We have a relationship with God. Yes. Not a religion, but a relationship. Whereby the Bible says we've been adopted as sons yes. and daughters and have received the spirit of adoption yes. whereby we can cry, Abba, Father. We yes. can call God Father. Yes. We're in relationship with Him. We're sons of God created yes. in Christ Jesus. The Bible says in 1 John 2, I believe it says, that Now are we the sons of God. Yes. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but this we know, yes. that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, and we will God. see him as yes. he is. Amen. But right now, I am a son of God, Amen. so I know who I Amen. am God. in Christ yes. Jesus. You ought to know if you're in Christ, yes. if, you're, if you've been blood washed, blood bought, and you have been filled with yes. the Holy Ghost Praise and you, and you are in Christ. You are a son yes. of God. Hallelujah. And you know who you are Amen. in Christ Jesus. Amen. You don't let somebody tell you, uh, dictate or, or lay out who you they think you are or mm. what you ought to be. Mm. You need to go by what the word of God Amen. says you are. And you need to see yourself as God sees you. Amen. Amen. The word of the Lord, Lord we taught on last week who we are in Christ is as in Christ we are new creatures. In, 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 in newness of life. We are new creatures in, in newness of life. Number two, for the first time, we have become spiritually alive mm -hmm. because we were dead in our trespasses mm -hmm. and sins. Mm -hmm. Now we are alive mm -hmm. unto God. Mm -hmm. Our relationship mm -hmm. with God is because we are now alive mm -hmm. unto him. Yes, Amen? Amen? We go from being God's enemies to being God's children. Yes. Uh, you can't beat that. Praise Amen. the name of the Lord. Wait, and, and as listen, as such as God's children, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, we then have been made heirs to God yes. and joint Join heirs heirs to Jesus Christ. Amen. We're heirs to God. Amen. Then it goes on to say in, in Peter, Second Peter, that we become partakers Partaker. of God's yes. divine nature. God. God imparts a part of Himself Ooh, in Jesus. us. Hallelujah. It's going to really get good after a while because I, you know I, I'm trying to build. Uh, each week on, on the premise that you God. must be born again and the benefits of becoming children Amen. of God. Listen, there is a, uh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and Amen. all that is within me. Amen. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord and forget not all of his yes. benefits. Listen, there is a benefit in serving God. God. There is, <laughs> you know, Satan, Satan accused Job of it. You know, when, when God was, was this business, that this dialogue that Amen. went on between uh, uh, the Lord and, and Satan. He says, Satan, where you been? He said, I've been to and fro on the mm -hmm. earth. And he said, have you considered my servant Job? He said, yeah, I've considered him, but I can't touch him because you got a hedge around him. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. <laughs> One of the promises of God <laughs> of us that are in him is divine protection. Amen. He becomes Praise a place God. of refuge. Yes. He said in, in, in Psalm 91, it's there where it, in, in, in God, under God's divine protection, where we can avoid the snares of the fowler from the from the traps yes. and the snares that the enemy wants to lay off for us. In Ephesians, the sixth chapter, yes. the Bible, the Apostle Paul teach, tells, teaches us.
in the church that listen, we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. Right. We are understand that he's throwing fiery yeah. darts, but they can't. Listen, the darts fall short when we are in Christ Jesus. They don't penetrate. They don't hit the target when we're in Christ Jesus because of that divine protection. There is a benefit in serving God. There is a benefit in loving God. There is a benefit in being in the family of God. Thank you, Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We have a new life. We're no longer enemies to God. Remember, there's a cessation of against us. There is a flag waving. There is peace when the Bible Lord. says in Romans, the fifth Thank chapter, God. therefore being justified by faith. Mm -hmm. that, that, that means we're justified, not we're in right standing yes. with God. Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Oh my God. We're no longer enemies Thank with God. Lord. You that are out on the outside, Jeez. you who not have come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and received the free mm -hmm. gift, the gift of pardon that he has laying on the table, if you have not received that, you are an enemy of God. Mm. You're at war with God. Mm. Not only are you at war mm. with yourself, but you are at war with God. Mm. And, you, and listen, that's a war, mm. that's a battle. You're not going to win. Gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> we have new life being yeah. in the, by, by being part of the family of God. And we are free to follow God. Mm. And God, to free, free to follow God and to care for others in Christ and become more Christ like. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise, God. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. So in our our lesson and our message on today, you must be identified with Christ mm. through baptism. Through baptism. Now there are some things we have to do and I wanna I wanna preface my remarks by saying, you know, uh, there are a lot you know the the the, the the subject of water baptism is quite controversial. The controversy, the controversy began 2,000 years ago, and there's been four or five different versions of it ever since. I don't expect to uh, solve the, <laughs> the, the controversy in anybody's mind uh, to, to their satisfaction on today. I don't expect to do that. I don't have time to do that. But what I have, what I have is what the Word of Amen. the Lord says, and I'm going to give you what the Word of God Amen. says. Now, the Word of God says, where Paul says in Romans the 14th chapter, look, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Amen. So after I give you the Word Amen. of God, you let the Word of God deal Amen. with you, okay? Amen. Now, as a representative of this church, as the pastor of this church, I have to take a, a stand, and, I, and my stand that I'm taking is not upon the words of men, it's not upon tradition, it's not upon what I read in a book, it's something that Amen. we have practiced in our understanding based upon what the, 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 the multitude of scripture. I can show you scripture after mm -hmm. scripture concerning water baptism mm -hmm. and what our responsibility mm -hmm. is to mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. concerning water baptism. Amen. So let's take this apart. You, but you must be identified with Christ. Okay? Out of all that Christ has done for us, we have to be identified with him. Amen. Peter told us. That is, is him, is by the, by his suffering, by his sacrifice in 1 Peter 3 and 18, mm -hmm. that he has brought us to God. Yes. Uh-huh. And so yes. we have a responsibility mm -hmm. that, you know, we don't come out of unscathed. Listen, come let on. me say that. Come it's on. salvation uh, uh, by grace and not of works. We just read that. Mm -hmm. uh, not of works, mm -hmm. lest any man should boast. Uh -huh. it is, uh, salvation is 100%. A work of God, and, 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 is, and you have nothing to do with it. Right. Now, there's folks that have a problem with that, but you know your problem is not with me. Your problem is with Scripture. Amen. The Bible goes on to say you must be identified uh -huh. with Christ to be baptized. Mm -hmm. The Greek word means baptizo. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna step back and step down a little bit because I really want to. I want to. I'm gonna preach this, but I kind of want to teach it too. So it's gonna be kind of a mixture of both. Because I want you to be clear in where we stand in this church. Amen. 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 We have been preaching on our, as we pointed out, our salvation mm -hmm. sermon series. Mm -hmm. And so we've been building. We laid a foundation mm -hmm. and we've been building. And I got three more sorts of messages on next week of beyond discipleship. Because it ain't enough That's just right. to just say you're That's saved, right. but then you got That's to right. do something. That's Amen. Right. Amen. There, there is some things that you need. That's you're not right. saved by your works. Mm -hmm. But James said, you show me a man with faith, and I'll show you a man that has words behind it. All right? So, baptism is, 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 a, is a word. It is really has not been 
translated into English. It's been transliterated into English. The original word for bapt baptism is baptizo. Okay? And the word means to be dipped or immersed. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. In water. It means mm -hmm. to be a dip. Uh, in, 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 now we say in water, but you can you can immerse a thing. You can identify a thing uh, in, in various ways. As I always use an example, that when the Roman soldiers went out to battle, before they would go out to battle, they would take uh, big pots, big vats of blood. Mm -hmm. They would take their swords mm -hmm. and they would dip their swords in blood, which mm -hmm. means that now this is, this is a, not only just a sword of defense, but it's a sword of war. Mm -hmm. It's a sword that's going to draw blood. Mm -hmm. it's, it becomes identified with fighting and, mm -hmm. and, to, and, to, and to slaughter and to mm -hmm. dismantle and disrupt and to take the mm -hmm. lives of it, that, that it, it stopped just being an ordinary sword. Mm -hmm. It became identified mm -hmm. with, as a sword of battle. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says that baptism is a, is a way of, of being identified, to being immersed, to be mm -hmm. dipped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Peter was obeying Christ's command in Matthew, watch this, Matthew, tw uh, 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 Matthew, in Matthew 28 and 19, and we're going to come back to that. Uh, but I want to, what I want to do is read, I want to read a passage for you. Preaching real good. I want to preach, I want to, <laughs> I want to read a passage for you first. Because uh, this is a controversial passage and I don't know for the sake of, uh, of, of common reasoning, I, I don't understand why it's a point of uh, conflict at all because it's really quite clear. And let me just say this, you always interpret our, our method, our her, method of hermeneutics in this church is that we, that's hermeneutics is a science and art of biblical interpretation. We interpret scripture with scripture. Mm -hmm. We let the preponderance of scripture speak. Mm -hmm. You can't take one scripture mm -hmm. or two scriptures mm -hmm. that are obscure mm -hmm. in light of a, a plethora of mm -hmm. clear scriptures mm -hmm. and interpret the the clear based upon the obscure. You take all of the clear passages of scripture that, that deals with a particular subject and you interpret the obscure passages with the clear passages. Mm -hmm. That's called a biblical hermeneutic. That's mm -hmm. a rule that we follow in this church. So you Amen. can't grab one or two scriptures and go running with it when there's a plethora. You have to take the whole counsel of God. You know, God told e Ezekiel, look, you got to eat the whole roll. You can't take bites and snippets out of it. You got to eat the whole thing. Amen. 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 All right. So to be to, to be baptized in Acts two and thirty seven. Acts the second chapter verse thirty seven. This is after Peter was filled with the Holy Ghost and he preached. He preached Christ to those uh, men who were in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost. He preached. God Peter went out and preached under the anointing of the Holy Ghost like a wild man. The Bible says that the people that heard it were pricked in their hearts. Mm. And they came and they said, now when we heard this, they were mm -hmm. cut to the heart. Mm -hmm. And they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men or brother and brethren, what shall we do? Mm -hmm. What other translations, what must we do to be saved? Mm -hmm. uh, Acts 2.38, Peter said to them, you got to repent. And let, everyone, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remissions of sin, better translated, because of the remissions of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Repent, be baptized, and believe on, on the name of this Jesus that y'all just killed 50 days ago. Mm -hmm. Praise the name of the Lord. And, and Matthew 28, 19, we said Peter was fulfilling the commandment that Christ gave him before Christ after Christ was resurrected, he gave him and the rest of the apostles um, a mandate in Matthew 28. And it's our mandate too, as well. In Matthew 28, let's go down to verse 16. It says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. He had been resurrected. and he, But some doubted. In verse 18, Jesus says this, then said Jesus unto them, and, uh, and said, then came Jesus unto them and said, All authority, all power, all authority is given in heaven to me on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples. I'm going to preach on that a couple, in, in a couple of weeks about this disciple business. Because here's another step that we often leave out. Mm -hmm. He said, go and make disciples mm -hmm. of all nations 
baptizing them mm -hmm. in the name of the Father and the Son. Go ye therefore and preach the gospel, mm -hmm. teaching them to observe all things, mm -hmm. baptizing them in the name of the Father, the mm -hmm. Son, and the Holy Ghost. There's no contradiction when he said, uh, repent and be baptized in Jesus' name. Mm. He's fulfilling the mandate of yeah. Jesus. You know, people are spraying at gnats and swallowing camels. <laughs> there, there is no contradiction here. Peter is fulfilling this mandate. Amen. You got to preach to people. Amen. They have to be regenerated Amen. in their heart. Amen. They have to be born again Amen. for the remission of, of their sins, yes. of which the blood of Jesus yes. Christ is sufficient to Amen. deliver us from. Amen. And in the act of obedience, in the act of identifying with yes. that Christ who is your yes. Savior, you got to be baptized Amen. in water. You got to make a stand for God. That's it. Amen. Commanding the people who repented and turned to the Lord, Christ for salvation, to be identified through the waters of baptism, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Uh -huh. Now, water baptism has a purpose. We're going to understand. We're going to understand. You're going to understand this when I'm finished. Mm -hmm. If the water baptism, did, listen, the water ain't saving nobody. That's if it right. was, we wouldn't need the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Amen. If water could do it, we can all go out to Santa Monica and yeah. then. Uh, beach and, and swan dive off the pier and just jump off into the. You can go in the backyard in my jacuzzi here. And, and if, if the water, the water is the water is not saving any. The water right. is a symbol that Peter taught us in, in sick First Peter three and eight. We're going to yeah. go back to it in a minute. I just want to lay this foundation. Water baptism is considered. Now listen, the first act, the first step of obedience. Mm -hmm. That every confessed believer in the finished work of Christ concerning salvation, by regeneration, justification, and sanctification that you should take. Amen. It's the first step of obedience. Yes. You don't want to be water baptized? That says a whole lot. Mm -hmm. It tells me you haven't been regenerated. Mm -hmm. It tells me you've not been born again. Mm -hmm. It tells me you haven't been justified. Mm -hmm. It tells me that you haven't been sanctified. Mm -hmm. It tells me that you're not a genuine believer. You're fake. And we have a lot of faith. Mm -hmm. Listen. We, there's, there's a lot of counterfeits walking around. Y'all know what a counterfeit is? A counterfeit appears to look like the, the, the real thing. It, uh, it appears to be genuine. But when you start examining it closely, you find out that it's only a dime store counterfeit. Water baptism, watch. I'm going to give you, water baptism is a public declaration. Uh-huh. Of your faith in Jesus Christ. I'll mm -hmm. say that again because somebody didn't hear it. Water baptism is a public declaration mm -hmm. of your faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. Some folk want to sprinkle people. Some folk want to baptize kids. And, you know, I'm not getting into all of that today. That's not the message today. <laughs> you all understand what water baptism is. Yeah. When you go down into the uh -huh. water after you understand who, who what uh, that you have been regenerated yes. and that you have a clear faith and, and trust Amen. in the finished work of Jesus Amen. Christ. That's what you're being identified Amen. with. Praise Water God. baptism, watch, is an identification mm -hmm. of, of the old man dying with Christ and the new man being resurrected as a new creature. Amen. We said that it was, it's done first, Ephesians, the first chapter says we, we, that we have been uh, uh, we who are dead in Christ have now been made alive, but it's so weak. We symbol it's symbolized mm -hmm. in in baptism that death that we that we undertook when we were uh, going to the water. It symbolizes uh, death. It symbolizes going down into the grave and you coming up in newness of life. Water baptism is identification of the old life dying with Christ and the new life being resurrected as a new creature. Amen. Amen. So, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's what? A new, new creature. creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen. While we do not preach water baptism is necessary condition for salvation, it serves, now watch this, I'm going to say, I'm going to be, I'm going to slow down here. We do not preach that water baptism is, is a necessary condition for salvation, but it serves as an extremely important first step of your act of obedience Amen. to the word of God. Because you are saved, because you are a new creature in Christ Jesus, it's because of 
not to be saved. It's not a condition for salvation. It's because you are saved. Now you are identified Amen. with Christ. And listen, you need to make a public stand. Amen. Folks need, somebody need to see you. Amen. People, the, 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 the household of faith, the church, and you get back to, so I hear these folks talking about, you know, they want to go way out to the River Jordan. They feel like they got to get on a plane and fly to Israel <laughs> to be baptized. In a, it doesn't matter where you, listen, as long as there are witnesses Amen. that the household of faith can corroborate the fact that you are, have gone down into the water mm -hmm. and you've been identified with the finished work of Jesus Amen. Christ. Praise God. Praise God. The Apostle Peter in Acts 2.38 is preaching here to be baptized mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus to be identified with Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. For, that is, because of the forgiveness or remission of your sin. Amen. It's because you have been forgiven. Amen. It's because your sins have been remitted that you're now going down into the water to say amen. amen. You must be identified with Christ. We believe to make water baptism a requirement for salvation is inconsistent with the whole counsel of Scripture. Mm. Now, again, I'm not going to, you know... Uh, for those of folks that want to argue and go back and forth, I'll leave it to you all. I got work to do <laughs> and within this ministry. I got to get out of our mandate to get saved, get Amen. people saved. You know, we want to encourage. Uh, we want to encourage those who are believers. We Amen. want to get those who are not saved to become believers. Amen. You know, we I got a lot on my plate. I don't have a whole lot of time to be, you know, I don't mind discussing some things for clarity, but you know these these ongoing debates and, and what I believe it was Paul, Paul that told Timothy and he told mm -hmm. Titus to avoid foolish questions mm -hmm. and end, end, endless genealogies and debates that mm -hmm. go on and on and on. The the issues of baptism, whether it's water, whether it's sprinkling, whether we whether you, it it's, it's necessary for salvation, whether it's not necessary for salvation. Whether you baptize kids, you know, how old the kids got to mm -hmm. be, can it be infants, uh -huh. it's infant. Yeah. These issues, and I just gave you four or four or five mm -hmm. of them, there's three more versions of it. These issues have been debated going all the way back yep. to the 16th century Re Reformation <laughs> that folks have been arguing back in. So you have to be fully persuaded in your own, in your own mind. mind. There, yeah. the, the preponderance of scripture says that our, that our sufficiency of, for, for, of salvation for the remission of our sins has been bought and paid for Amen. with the precious blood of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Christ died once for yes. all. The blood that we just read, the just for the unjust. My, my, my sin debt has been paid. And it's nothing that I got to do to further put a stamp of God's approval on it by, by getting baptized in water and therefore, and until that happens, I'm not. No, it, it is already an established fact by the, by the word of God. Amen. Amen? Amen. So we believe that to make water baptism, uh, we're talking about water baptism. Amen. Next week we are, we are going to talk about spirit baptism. Spirit baptism. Peter is commanding today, repent and be baptized in water mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. That's a command. Mm -hmm. It's our first step of obedience. Amen. It's an act that Amen. we do. Amen. But when we're talking about the baptism of the spirit, where, Saint, where uh, uh, Matthew in the third chapter, uh, uh, with the account of John the Baptist, who was out preaching and baptizing people in water, and Jesus came along, he said, listen, there's one that's coming after me. Right now, I'm only baptizing in water, but there's one who's coming. I'm not uh, worthy to unlace yeah. his shoes. When he get here, he's going to baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen. So there is another baptism that we're, that's, that's separate and distinct. From the one that we're talking about today. We're Amen. talking about water baptism and being identified with Christ. The, the baptism of, of the Spirit, the baptism that God, that Jesus being the baptizer in the Holy Ghost, when he baptizes us, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians, we're baptized, he places us into the body of Christ. Amen. This Praise is how we God. become associated with the family of God. Mm. This is how we become connected to the mm. family of the body of Christ, the family of God, the mm. church. We're placed in through baptism, mm. spirit baptism. Amen. And you're not commanded to do that. That's something John said that the, that the he that cometh after me shall do, not mm. you. And so what we're responsible to do is to obey the words of Peter with our first act of obedience 
to be baptized in water. Amen. You were never told or commanded to be baptized in the Spirit. That's a different baptism. We're going to talk about that in a few Sundays. And then there's the subject of being filled with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So we talk about baptism with water. We're talking about the baptism of the Spirit to be placed into the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And then we talk about Paul, the Apostle Paul says in the book of Ephesians, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Be not drunk with wine in whereas in this excess, mm -hmm. but be ye filled mm -hmm. with the Spirit. And that means, he goes on to say, that there can be many feelings, many feelings of the Spirit. You can all have to look. And the comparison, the metaphor, is as wine can control you and control your actions mm -hmm. and your minds and mm -hmm. your thoughts. He said, don't be controlled by that, but That's be right. controlled Amen. by the Holy Ghost, Amen. by Praise being God. filled with the Spirit. Praise and God. to be filled Amen. with the Spirit means mm -hmm. to be moment by moment, yes. second by second, yes. controlled by the Spirit Praise of God. God. That's Amen. what it means. Amen. Amen. Doesn't mean that you're going to shout over it. it listen, it, it, it brings jubilance. It does bring joy. Yes. It, it brings joy unspeakable and yes. full of glory. It, it, it give, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes. And the Holy Spirit gives us that yes. joy and yes. understanding yes. that we are yes. that we're in Christ, yes. that we're born yes. again, yes. that yes. we are connected yes. with God. And it brings yes. that you're going to miss hell and be yes. miss heaven. Yes. That your name, your chicken has been punched. That you have a place. Yes. Jesus yes. said, I'm going to come into, uh, go to uh, to, I go to prepare a place for you, that if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. That's Thank good news. Yes. And that good news Man. causes Thank us to Lord. have joy, yes. joy unspeakable. Thank and you, sure Jesus. we'll shout, sure we'll, re we'll oh, dance, yes. we'll rejoice yes. in God. But being filled with the Spirit means more so Man. that you're controlled moment by moment. Praise God. That we're operating in love. Yes. Galatians 5.22 Long suffering, yes. peace, gentleness, yes. long suffering, love. Mm -hmm. it, 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 those are the fruit, not fruits with an S, fruit, fruit. of the that's what the Holy Spirit fruit being filled Spirit. with him Amen. produces. Yes. Alright? Amen. Praise God. So we'll talk about that in the next in, in, in the uh, opinion weeks that the Lord says this thing. So back to this re, this today's subject, being identified with Christ. You have to be identified through Christ, with Christ through baptism. Amen. Not to be to be saved, but to be identified with Him. The reality of forgiveness precedes the rite of baptism. I'll say that again. The reality of forgiveness it precedes the rite of baptism. And for in in, in verse forty one of, of Acts two. We just read 37 and 38, if I don't include verse 41, mm -hmm. it goes on to say, and they were all baptized. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those who said, uh, what must we do? Mm -hmm. And the apostle says, repent and be baptized mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus mm -hmm. because of the remission of your sin. Mm -hmm. Verse 41, two verses later, it says that they were all baptized. <laughs> So they showed themselves to be true believers Amen. by their first act of obedience of being identified mm -hmm. with the message, with being identified with Christ because of their obedience. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. In Ephesians 1, verses 5 through 7. Now we started out in Ephesians 2, remember? Mm -hmm. But in Ephesians 1, verses 5 through 7, it says, Having been predestined, having predestined us, to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the to His good pleasure, to the good pleasure of His will, to the praise of the glory of His grace, by which He has made mm -hmm. look, by which He has made us mm -hmm. acceptable in the beloved. Verse mm -hmm. seven, in whom we have redemption. Amen. Watch this through His blood. What else? The forgiveness of sins. According to the riches of his grace. The Bible verses that clearly link salvation. The Bible verses. That clearly link salvation and baptism. Do so. Because baptism identifies us. With our conversion. Mm -hmm. It's the declaration. That salvation has occurred. Amen. 
In other, in other words, it, it, it's, it's a confirmation that, that this work has been done in me. That God has done a work on my heart. That I have been changed. Amen. That that I've been regenerated. That I've been converted. I'm no longer what I used to be. I may not be all that I can be, but I'm, I'm sure enough ain't what I used to be. I'm no longer, and I keep saying this, and I'm going to continue to say it until y'all get it in your mind. You can stop saying I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. You are a child of God. You've been converted. You have been uh, regenerated, and our sins have been removed. Our sins have been, we have been washed clean. We have been justified. We're now in good, right standing with God. And now he has the, the opportunity to mold us and make us and to conform us to the image of his son. Amen. That's God's ultimate plan and purpose for our lives is that we become more like Jesus. Amen. That was God's plan and purpose from the beginning. Let us make men in our image and after our likeness. That was the, I always said that in in. in, in in Genesis, and it, and then and Paul says in Philippians the second chapter that God then is at work in Amen. us to will and to do of His good pleasure. Pleasure. Amen. In the meantime, work out your soul salvation with Amen. fear and in trembling, because God wants to do a work in you. God wants to take you from the place where you are to another place. God's not interested in you staying where you are. He wants to change your life. He wants to draw you closer to himself. He wants to fellowship with you. He wants to have a relationship with, with you. He wants to bless you, encourage you. He wants you to be a, a, the head and not the tail. He wants you to be a light that's set up on a hill. He wants you to be the salt in, of the earth and, 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 to, and, and to have victory and power and to be a, more than a conqueror and, and be victorious in him. That's what God wants for you. That's what he wants for us. Praise the name of the Lord. You have to be identified with him. You have to make a stand. You can't be ashamed of God. You can't be ashamed of calling yourself a Christian. It's the declaration that of salvation. It is the declaration that salvation has occurred. The idea, and I just watched this, and I found this, and I just, I'm going to read this to you. The idea of an, look, look the, the idea of an unbaptized believer was anathema. That, uh, and I'm going to show you something. I'm going to give you something. Some of y'all are going to hang up. The term anathema is used. Paul uses it in Galatians. If anybody comes to you preaching any other gospel that, that I preach, I don't care if it's an angel, let him be anathema. The term anathema, anathema means to be damned of God. Let him be damned of, let him be God damned. Let him be damned of God. If he bring you any other a, a message other than the word of God, let him be anathema. Now, if you don't like that, then you got to get mad with Paul first. Because he's the one, in fact, he's the only one that uses it in the Bible. Let him be anathema, damned of God. Judged of God is what it means. The idea, and so the, the idea of an unbaptized believer, it was anathema to the New Testament church. It, it was, it's, 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 it's inconsistent. It's not and listen, how could you, if you can't, it, listen, if a person claimed to believe in Christ, but was ashamed to proclaim the faith in public through baptism, it was an indication that that person's faith was not genuine. Mm. Is your faith genuine today? Mm. It's, it's easy to say I'm a Christian, mm. but have you been identified with Christ? It's easy to hang out with Christians, to hang around the church. Maybe they gave you a job, you an usher. Maybe you sing it in the, you hiding in the choir. Or you you sing in the choir, but you really haven't made a commitment. You really haven't made a step. Listen, I'm listen. There's folk. Are, John says in First John the second chapter. Listen, there are those that are among us that have left us, and it's because they have left us. It, it, it testifies to the fact that they never w was really with us. Because if they were really with us, then they would not have left from out among us. The fact that they left from out among us, it testifies that they never was with us. So you have folks that's among you. You have people that sit next to you that's in the congregation. Maybe they're in the choir. Some folks is in the pulpit. Really, just you think because they have uh, the gift of gab, because they can speak real well, it don't mean that they have... Uh, uh, identify themselves with Christ in baptism. Amen. Find out if they baptize. 
Find out if they've been baptized when they made their commitment. Find out. I was baptized as a child, and when I came to faith in Jesus Christ, I got baptized yeah. again yeah. as a grown man in yeah. Mount Calvary Church of God yeah. in Christ. I got baptized again because now I understood what it means right. to be a child of God and yeah. what it means to be in the ark of safety in the family of God and have a relationship with God. It's meaningful now. Now I want to make my I want to make my declaration my declaration. I want to be identified with the Savior that saved me. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Is your faith genuine? Have you been identified? You must be identified with Christ Amen. through baptism. We don't we don't preach baptismal regeneration here, but we do preach baptism as an identifying first step of your act of obedience to God. That's what we believe here. The sign behind me. Uh, uh, Acts uh, 19 and 20. Uh, it's the word of God that prevails. It's the preponderance of what scripture says. This is what we believe and what we teach in this church. Salvation is available. The arms of the Lord are out to save. He desires, he's come to seek and to save those that are lost. The issue is, will you hear the, the knock, the plea that's at your heart? Uh, and, and to come to him. Praise the name. Well, I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to ask Evangelist uh, First Lady Harden is going to come and she's going to have final remarks uh, concerning uh, the message on today. You must be you, you must be identified with Christ. And then she's going to give us our our, our, our benediction. So let's receive her by saying God bless First Lady Harden. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. What a word of God. Thank you, uh, Pastor Hardy, for giving us that word and giving us a series on salvation. Explaining to us the importance of coming to Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus, and the price that he paid for us through his suffering and his death. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And also letting us understand that we must be identified with Christ Jesus that we must tell someone and we must be baptized as an, identifi as an identification that we belong to God, that we are children of God. We yes. just thank you for that word. Yes. Uh, you bow your heads with me, please, and come go with me in prayer. Father God, we just thank you for your word today, Lord. We pray, Father God, that we know, God, that your word, it did fall on good ground. Oh, God. Lord God, because you said that your word would not return to your voice. Yes, Lord. And God, we know that there is someone who heard this word this morning, Lord oh, God, Jesus. that they are pondering yes. and thinking about uh, what Pastor Hardy preached on this morning. The words from you, God, that says that we must be baptized to be identified with you, God. We thank you, Lord God, that your word did fall on good ground. And that we will also not just be hearers of your oh, word, God. Yes. but we will obey your word and be doers as well. We pray, Father God, that you will continue to anoint Pastor Hart, Lord oh, God, Jesus. as he preach, teach, and deliver your word My to God. your people, Lord God, that men, women, and children may be saved and learn of you, Father God. We thank you for this word. Oh, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> So unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has given us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We thank you for being with us this morning. Amen. And we pray that you be well as you go with God. And please, please be saved. Praise God. Thank you, God.